So that's right, with the Voice Live 3 Extreme, you have the ability to load in backing tracks into your presets. So who should be using backing tracks? So basically, if you are doing a play along, you have a backing track that has the music that you want to play to, you want to hit play on the foot switch, play to the backing track, uh, and not use the looper functionality. Because if you use backing tracks, you will not have access to the looper menu. You, you can uh, pause, play, stop, fast forward, rewind the backing track, but you will not be able to loop. So keep that in mind. But if you want, you have a backing track you want to play to live, you just want to hit the foot switch, have it play from beginning to end, well, this is the tutorial for you. Let's now tackle the very first steps in working with backing tracks. The first thing you'll need is to get your hands on a USB flash drive or a USB memory stick or thumb drive. Now the important thing here is the supported USB flash drive filing systems. When you format your thumb drive, and I recommend that everyone that does this starts off by formatting the drive, make sure that you format it using the FAT32 file system. That's the typical PC uh, Windows filing system. Things like NTFS, HFS Plus, which is the OS X filing system, or other file systems cannot be read by the VL3X. So it's very important that you use FAT32. So format the thumb drive using FAT32, and then we'll continue. The next thing to note is that the VL3X can only import MP3 or WAV audio files. So I'd like to go ahead and walk you through creating a backing track. Let's do this together. Okay, I've opened up Logic Pro X. Uh, this is my DAW of choice uh, for this sort of thing, but you can use whatever you're comfortable with. They pretty much do the same thing. Uh, all of them out there from Sonar to Pro Tools to Logic Pro X. Now, I'm going to bring in my backing track that I intend to use with the Voice Live Extreme. Once it's uh, imported like this, and I'll let you hear a, a portion of it, it just... Uh, the only reason I'm bringing this into Logic Pro X is so I can export it with very specific settings, and I'd like you to follow along with me. So I'm going to bounce this track, and notice I have MP3 not selected. I don't want an MP3. What I want is a file format of WAVE at a resolution of 24 bits and a sample rate of 48 kilohertz, 48,000. So the reason I'm selecting these uh, settings is because the Voice Live Extreme is a piece of hardware designed to work with uh, WAV file formats at a re resolution of 24-bit and a sample rate at 48K. So if you don't do this, what has to happen when you import a track is the Voice Live Extreme is going to convert the file to match these settings, make it a WAV, make it 24 bits and 48K. Uh, but that takes an extremely long period of time. So I'd highly recommend you just start with the correct conversion formats needed, which again is WAV, 24-bit, 48K and save it this way because uh, your computer, or in my case uh, Logic Pro X, can definitely convert this much faster than the Voice Live Extreme can. So this is my suggestion. I'm going to go ahead and export this. Now I've expor exported the file and you'll notice I have a thumb drive connected to my computer. I've labeled it Voice Live E3, but you can call the thumb drive itself anything you'd like. Let's open it up. Now inside, uh, the reason you're seeing folders <laughs> is one I created, the VL3 underscore loops with a capital L I created because that's how you import loop tracks, uh, which is different than backing tracks. When you re import a backing track, what you'll want to do is not put it inside of a folder. So I'm going to drag the backing track that we just created and drop it into my root directory. Keep in mind, I'm not putting it in a folder. The only time you want to use the VL3 underscore capital L-O-O-P-S folder is when you have loops you want to import. But in this case, I just have a backing track I want to import. I'm going to change the name of this. We'll call it Smooth Guitar. And just to be safe, I'm going to Totally not necessary. I just like to name my files with no spaces. Um, but anyway, you want to keep it in the root directory of the thumb drive, and that's it. Now you're ready to eject your thumb drive and connect it to the Voice Live 3 Extreme, and we'll be doing that next. 
But before I move on, I want to explain, uh, you can also record your performances, and that's what this folder does. Now, if you don't create this folder, in fact, don't create this folder, as soon as you do do a recording with the Voice Live 3 Extreme, it will create the folder for you, and inside you will find the recordings. Uh, we'll cover that in a later video. Okay, now it's time to jump over to the VL3, where on the back side you'll find a place to put your thumb drive into. Uh, let's go ahead and insert it in the back, and from there we will fire up our Voice Live Extreme 3. Okay, I'm going to start from the home screen. And the first thing you're going to do is pick what preset you want to assign the backing track to. In this case, I have a preset selected, uh, which is number 10, and it's called Body Res 1. Uh, to rename the preset, you can hit the store button, and with the function keys that rotate, the rotary function keys, you can just change the name. So this is the cursor position, and here's the lettering, and uh, you can insert or delete, and then this is going to store to preset 10, and you can change that if you'd like. But in this case, I'm going to leave it body red. You can name this whatever you want, my backing track, or the name of the backing track that you're planning to play and assign to this preset. Um, once you've done that, what we need to do is we need to take the backing track from the USB drive and put it onto the unit so we don't have to have the USB drive attached to the unit all the time. To do that, from the store screen, you will use the arrow keys and arrow over past loop import. Again, the loop import will point inside of that loop folder that we're currently not using. We want to get to the root directory and pull in a backing track. In order to do that, we will go all the way to the right where it says track import. If you just keep scrolling to the right, you'll come across the tab that says track import. From there, you'll see the files that are available from the root directory. Notice it doesn't see the folders anymore. It just sees the file that we have in that root directory. Um, never mind. there's one that says it has a dot underscore smooth guitar. Uh, that's just extra files that my Mac creates uh, on a thumb drive and your PC might as well. Uh, you can ignore that. Just go to the, the one that's actually named properly Smooth Guitar. In my case, you'll want to click it once to select the rotary knob, the large rotary knob, and then click and hold, as it says at the bottom, to import. It just asks, are you sure you want to import it? And hit OK. From there, it's going to import. And uh, this does take a while, so you're going to want to hang tight until it's complete. You'll see a progress bar, and uh, we'll just kind of wait until this is done. Once that's done, uh, you can go back to your preset. Now, we've imported the backing track from the thumb drive to the Voice Live 3 Extreme. So it exists on the box, but of course it's not related to this preset yet. I just happened to have this preset on the screen while we were doing that, but it didn't attach it to this preset. So let's do that next. Right now, if we press and hold the looper button, notice, ah, I apologize. Let me go to a different preset. Let's go to 11. I happen to have it named the same way uh, for a show I did last week. But um, let's go ahead and press and hold this to get to our looper menu. Now notice we have looper A, B, and C like we typically do with a looper. And I can play them all. And there they're playing in the background. I'll stop them all. But we don't want the looper. We want a backing track associated to this preset, number 11. So to do that, what we'll do is hit looper. And within the looper menu, you will have some tabs. And you're going to look for the tab that says backing track. And when you get there, you're going to notice that it currently says backing track none. Well, we want a backing track. So it's quite simple. We basically ro use the rotator knob here at the bottom until we find the track that we've imported that we want to use. In this case, it's called Smooth Guitar. I can pick from any of the other tracks that I have imported in the past, but in this case, we want Smooth Guitar. Once that's selected, I can click out of the looper menu, and notice my looper options are now gone. I don't have tracks A, B, and C anymore. Remember that I said that if you're using the looper track, you can't use the backing track and vice versa. If you're using the backing track, you can't use the looper. In this case, we're dedicating this preset number 11 to a backing track. And now we have it loaded up. Of course, when you're done with all this, you'll want to hit store twice. That way it stores it in memory. You can turn the machine on and off now. And then next time you go to preset 11, you'll notice that the backing track will load instead of the looper. I'm going to go to the home menu for a second. I want you to notice that on the preset 11, the bottom right, you'll see a little BT letting you know that there is a backing track assigned to this. If I go to my 11 preset, you'll notice that's not there because I don't have anything uh, assigned to this. But if I go back to 11, right away we know 
hey, we've got a backing track there. From the backing, so, so from here, we'll want to go ahead and get back into the backing track menu that you get into the same way you would if you wanted to go into a looper by pressing and holding the looper menu. And from here, uh, we'll do a quick run through through the buttons. If you want to play the backing track, uh, and of course the positions on the screen mimic the positions of the foot switches. So the bottom right would be the play button. The double comp would be the stop button. You can fast forward with the hit button. You can rewind with the step button. By the way, you can also fast forward and rewind with the dial. and play from there if you want. Now, the bottom left button, uh, foot switch, is going to be your backing track menu, which basically is kind of cool. Some people might want to have one preset assigned for backing tracks and then just load them up on the fly. So in this case, by hitting that, you'll see all of the, the backing tracks that I have preloaded on the machine, the ones that I've imported. So from here, you can simply, with your foot, cycle through, in this case, Sexy Blues backing track, and I can select that by hitting the step button here. Again, these buttons mimic the positions of these foot switches. And now when I hit play, I have my Sexy Blues backing track in A minor. And you can do that all day long. Go to the next one. Let's go to uh, Moon Dance. Click it, and it's loaded into that slot. So I can use one preset, assign it to be a backing track preset, and then through the backing track menu, just pull up the track I want to play and kick it off. Enough of that. Okay, um, the next thing would be, this gives you a, some additional uh, menu items. One, you can save to thumb drive. If you make a recording, you can save it to the thumb drive. You can save it to the machine. If you want to save it directly to the uh, Voice Live 3 Extreme, you can delete it um, or you can escape this menu. Uh, we'll, we'll cover those a little bit more in detail later. Uh, you're probably not going to end up using them very often. Uh, one thing that you might want to do uh, is record automation within your backing track. And you do that with this top right button, or the reverb button, which is basically this record button. What you would basically do, the idea here is that you play the backing track with the record button enabled, and then you can go in and make preset changes on the fly, and it will record every preset change. Which is kind of neat. Um, I don't think you'd be using it too much, but there's definitely some sections you'll, you'll want to use it in, like your chorus to verse, or verse to bridge, uh, or vice versa. Um, so anyway, the way that works is what you'll want to do is that's what this top right button f is for. This record button enables you to uh, record uh, the automation. Okay, the first thing to notice is there's two different modes for recording. There's the regular record, uh, record mode, uh, which we're looking at now with just the R. But if you hold and pr uh, I'm sorry, press and hold the button, it'll turn into the overdub record mode. And it's basically like a center dot with a s outer circular ring. Looks like that. Um, the two different modes. One is destructive, which means you're recording whatever you had previously, you're erasing and you're recording a brand new automation pass. Um, if you want to overdub, you can basically go ahead and play through the sequence, set up the presets the way you want, record them, go back and do an overdub, and you can add, uh, I'm sorry, overdub, and you can add another set of automation. And it won't destruct, it won't destroy the previously recorded automation pass. So you can just keep overdubbing and overdubbing and adding it more and more changes, effects changes that are being automated. Uh, maybe if I give you an example, it will make a little bit more sense. So let's start with a destructive pass by pressing and holding. And now we're in the replace mode, which is destructive. And now I can hit the button once. The sequence is playing. And while it's playing, anything you do here, for example, if I add delay to my guitar, or if I hit the hit button, boom, let's add all the stuff to my hit button. And then hit off. Right now, uh, the Voice Live 3 Extreme is recording all of these foot switches. So let's go back to the looper. I won't do the whole song. But if you look underneath the track, 
Let's stop this really quick. If you look at right underneath the track, you'll see little lines. Those lines are the automations that were recorded. So every press of a button that I did, uh, that's what you're basically seeing. Let's play this back for one second. Did you see the delay come on by itself? The hit came on by itself, and you notice I'm not touching anything. It's because the automation got recorded, and it's playing it back at the same time in the sequence that I had hit it when I was recording it. Let's go back to our sequence, let's stop it. Now, if we made a lot of mistakes and we wanted to start over, we would just hit R again and re-record a new automation pass. But if we wanted to keep the automation, let's say we were focusing on guitar effects during the song, now we want to go back and focus on, uh, on vocal effects processing, uh, we can go back and do it separately. That way you're not hitting a bunch of buttons trying to capture everything on one pass. But you can dial it in just perfectly. So let's go ahead and do an overdub pass now. Let's press and hold. You notice that because it's a dot with a sync, uh, an outer ring that we're in overdub mode. And now I can record. Now it says overdub sequence. And uh, we can do whatever we'd like on this. I can go into my guitar effects now. I'm oh, not press and hold, just press. Now we're in the uh, guitar effects. We can add delay to the guitar. Take the hit off. We can, as soon as we want to take our lead, we can hit the drive button. And again, these are just being overdubbed. This automation is being overdubbed automatically. Let's go ahead and get out of this, stop it, and you'll see the additional automation added that I just recorded. And that's basically how you can sit there and uh, so basically if you create a couple you set your presets up with the uh, with the hit button uh, you can apply it on your lead portions your chorus parts your verses and you don't have to do anything with the foot switches it'll basically change the uh, per, the effects presets automatically for you uh, and you can just focus on your audience you can be walking around sitting on girls laps or guys laps for the females or, or nowadays i guess it doesn't really matter <laughs> but uh, you can really focus on uh, entertaining your audience and not have to worry about hitting any kind of foot switches to, uh, to, affect your, uh, to change your effects. That's about it when it comes to backing tracks. I hope you enjoy the tutorial.